Yeah, guys, just another video in regard to the shit fuckery by the Family Law Court of Australia. Um, now, I got an invitation to go there, and I didn't know any better at the time, so I basically I just went along. Um, so what it was, um, my ex, she owned a house, I owned a house, and a few, a few other things as well. Um, so... Someone expected me to give them, I think it was like $670,000 or something like that. Uh, so we went along to the, uh, the shit fuckery that is the family law court. Um, played their little games for six months. Uh, I basically hired a lawyer initially and then he told me, okay, well, because like... He goes, no, you won't, you won't get your kids, so there's no point spending money. So he goes, just, just go along, do it yourself. So fair enough. So I went along, did it myself. So he basically was probably a good lawyer that way, because he gave me a bit, bit of advice. And I didn't know at the time, but the reason why he said that I wouldn't get access to my children is because all these type of commercial courts work on a status quo. Um, and what a status quo is, is basically what is will be, you know, so because I wasn't seeing my children, then therefore um, they weren't going to rule on me actually seeing my children. And the reason they don't make any of those rulings is because these type of courts don't actually have any authority at all. It's just shit fuckery. So they want you to enter into some, you go there to basically to enter into some contractual arrangement. And they want you to, you know, quote unquote, settle before the court hearing. Um, now, I didn't have any property, jointly owned property with that particular, particular person. Um, and... Basically, when I was being um, being interviewed on the stand, they they directed a question towards me in regard to um, my ex, how much money that I should be giving my ex, and I basically go, well, I will not be giving my ex any money. She is not entitled to any money at all. And um, and lo and behold, the end of the court case, the judge basically ruled that my ex would not receive any money at all from me. So they had to remove the caveat that they had put over my house because they actually had no evidence to support any claim that they actually had a debt at all. And yet, you know, you go around society and basically people say to you, you know, uh, you know, if you separate from a chick, she's going to get 60%, you're going to get 40%. That's just all bullshit. Um, like, you know, if you want to, in the family law, in law court, if you want to go along, you can use the precedent. There's a precedent called Stanford. So you can go along, quote that, Stan that Stanford case, whatever. Um... But it basically comes back to the principle that if you don't agree to it, they've got no, no authority to rule otherwise. So, and, and definitely don't don't be signing any documents, you know. Like, and I wouldn't even suggest going along there. Just like nowadays, I'd probably I'd probably just send a notice of refusal back to the court. You've got the right of refusal, and I keep banging on about this, even though there's many people go, well, it's the legislation. You have to comply by the comp comply by the legislation. Or maybe if you've entered into an arrangement with that particular commercial entity like the family law court, maybe you do have to comply by that legislation. But until until that point, until like until they gain jurisdiction over you, you know, you probably don't have to comply. So start looking into it, anyone. And um, feel free to um, get in touch with me if you... Uh, like I'm not saying that I know, uh, I know everything. I don't know hardly anything at all. But like I'm just I'm saying what's worked for me and what I've noticed, and I'm going to continue with this process. So.
All right. Cheers, guys. Bye.